I'm Craig Berry, by the way, of the Sheffield Political Economy Research Institute at the University of Sheffield, one of the partners behind this White Rose Consortium for the North of England, hashtag WRCN, if anybody's still tweeting. Um, this session is, is a roundtable composed of <coughs> people at the coalface, if you like, of uh, devolution and the city deals, their chance to tell, for them to tell you their perspective, your chance to ask them some questions about what's going on in their cities and regions too. Um, we could perhaps think of these four esteemed panellists as custodians of Martin Jones' impedimenta state, but maybe not, they'll, they'll tell us um, otherwise. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce them in the order that which they're going to speak. Um, so we'll be hearing first from Tom Reardon, who's the Chief Executive of Leeds City Council, sat beside me here. Um, Tom also formerly Chief Executive of Yorkshire Forward, Yorkshire's Regional Development Agency. Um, we'll then hear from Peter, who's on the far left as you see it. Um, leader of... <laughs> may, may, may not be true I'm politically as well. <laughs> leader of um, Wakefield Metropolitan District Council since 1998. Um, various other hats as well, which I'm sure... Peter will speak to today. He sits on the LGA, Local Government <coughs> Association, Executive. Uh, Peter also chairs the West Yorkshire Combined Authority and uh, the Leeds City Region Leaders Board. And he's also a board member of the Leeds City Region LEMP. We'll then be hearing from James Henderson, who sat next to Tom. Um, James is the Director of Policy, Performance and Communications at Sheffield City Council, uh, formerly of Barnsley Council and also with experience um, at the Homes and Communication Communities Agency. And finally we'll hear from Lord Christopher Haskins, sat next to James. Um, Lord Haskins is perhaps our the sort of business perspective on this panel. You'll, you'll probably know um, Lord Haskins, most of all for his um, work with Northern Foods, where um, Lord Haskins was the chairman for many, many years. He's also played a, a substantial role in public life too, currently as the chair of the Humber Local Enterprise Partnership, uh, previously as chair of the Better Regulation Task Force, a leading member of the Britain in Europe movement and perhaps most pertinently also part of the Yorkshire Regional Development Agency um, also. So um, I'll pass on to Tom first of all and then we'll hear from the remaining panellists and then there'll be hopefully ample opportunity for questions and answers at the end. Okay, um, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, um, so thanks for the uh, introduction, Craig, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, I've uh, worked for um, in the public sector for all of my career. I started off in, um, in Whitehall, um, working in the Department of the Environment, um, working on international environment policy. I then moved to the regional level, um, Yorkshire Forward, um, I then moved to local government, Leeds City Council, eventually I will end up in a neighbourhood forum. Um, so I've got a perspective on all the different <coughs> levels, I guess, and the, the thing I would start by saying is that if you take Leeds as a city, 95% um, of the decisions that affect you if you live in this city as taxpayers, um, those decisions are taken outside the city, mainly in Whitehall and mainly by um, people who don't know a lot about the city and what we're going to talk about today is that problem. We're the most centralised um, country in I think the western world except Albania, somebody said recently um, and we, the way that Whitehall organises itself, the way that it votes money to do certain things once a year through parliament, through different departmental silos which was conceived in the, I think it was the 19th century, um, is no longer fit for purpose. We've got to find a different way of governing ourselves and we'll have a debate today about whether, you know, the rights and wrongs of the current arrangements, but actually the big issue is that we haven't got enough control over what happens in our places and it's not democratic enough. And if you take two examples, Leeds is the only city in your major city in Europe without a light rail, a major light rail system. And the reason for that is that over three decades, various governments and various administrations of different political persuasions 
have not managed to persuade the civil servants in the Department for Transport that we should have that sort of um, that sort of light rail system. And my my um, view is that if we have had the powers to take those decisions locally, there is no way that would be the case. We would have a tram in Leeds, we would have it running from Wakefield to between Wakefield and Leeds and Bradford, um, and we'd have a much more effective um, light rail system. The, this, um, the second example I would give you is that Leeds, as a major city, does not have the flood defences that you would expect for a, the third biggest city in the country. And again, over successive decades, we have tried to persuade civil servants through various formulae that it should have that protection because it's the economic centre of a wide, re wide range in area, I won't say Yorkshire given that I've got Sheffield sat next to me, but I'll say a wide range in economic area and um, you know we haven't had that protection. Would that have been allowed to happen if, it was, if we were talking about the City of London? My hypothesis is that no it wouldn't and it hasn't and they've got the Thames barrier, why shouldn't we have one here? So the basic need for us all is to unite much more around that agenda and to try and cut through the, the various technical discussions that we tend to have that you're going to hear about and that people obsess about and actually to get to the point where we all agree that that's got to change. Where, you know, I, I think things have worked really well in my experience are two things. When I was in the RDA, the fact that you had a really strong business and um, public sector, local authority partnership working together um, on cross-boundary issues, so not on the sort of more parochial stuff that we in Leeds would want, in, you know, rather than Sheffield or Bradford or someone else, but on those issues that genuinely cut across boundaries, transport, skills in the labour market, housing, um, you know, those sort of big infrastructure issues that make a difference to the economy. Um, they're the sort of things that we, that, that actually the decisions about them and the, the way that you, you can make things happen are much, are much more effective if you can have that partnership working well. The big weakness with the RDA was its lack of direct accountability and worked with Peter and Chris over many years on those agendas and it was always that Achilles heel and we had a really good arrangement in Yorkshire, the Regional Assembly, which Peter chaired, worked really well. Um, but it, it always, we always suffered from this criticism that, well, if you do something wrong, how, can we, how, how are you answerable to that? So moving into the new world that I'm in, um, local government looks very different from the inside than it does from the outside. And there's great strengths to local government. Its accountability is painful at times, I've got to say. Every decision is public. Every, um, you know, every uh, decision is scrutinised. And it leads, in my view, to much better decision making that's much more in the interests of communities. And if you compare consultation processes at a local level with a national level, they are much more likely to change and to adapt and to reflect local opinion because of that direct accountability. And I know councils are frustrating and I know, you know local politics and local you know, um, bureaucrats like me can be frustrating but actually it's a pretty good way of working and we've shown with the cuts that we can actually get things done and we can save much more money than Whitehall can and get the economy going much better than Whitehall can and, and I'll leave Peter to talk about the maybe about the stuff we've been doing in this part of the world on that agenda through the LEP and the combined authority but actually what we've been given to do so far is, is working pretty well. The big challenge we've got and the problem we've got is that our geography is not as straightforward as other parts of the country in trying to decide what the exact footprint will be if we were going to if we we're going to ha have to accept a directly elected mayor as a part of the new devolution that's happening. We did have um, I was returning officer for a, a referendum in this city three years ago that voted two to one against having a directly elected mayor in Leeds, and that's quite a a problem I think for people who are advocates of directly elected mayors. The other prob well, the way to get round that is to say well no this is a very different issue it's not about Leeds it's about the Leeds city region or West Yorkshire or a wider area you know so it's different so we didn't actually have a referendum about this so it's alright the referendum was the general election but you know whether you accept that or not 
there then becomes an issue about should you have power in the hands of one individual who is elected across Leeds, across Bradford, across Wakefield, um, other areas, um, how can you be answerable and accountable in that sort of um, uh -huh. in that sort of setup? And you know, this this is what's on offer. So what we're interested in is, if that is the case, then what are the checks and balances that you could put on that um, mayoral authority to make sure that it was reflecting the different voices and different parts of the country? different parts of the, um, th this part of the world that it reflects and that's what some of the debate is going on at the moment about which sounds technical but is actually really important because that power in the hands of one individual uh, has great example, everyone quotes London as the great success story, there are a few other parts of the country where it hasn't been a great success so we need to make sure that's sorted as well. So I'll finish up on the geography um, I, you know the, the, our, we are not Manchester so Greater Manchester, if you know that part of the world, is a much more urbanised area. Manchester City Council's area is five times smaller than the geographical area of Leeds City Council. Leeds City Council's geographic area is twice as big as Birmingham's. So just to give you a sense of that scale. And then you add on Bradford, 10th biggest city in the country, um, other major cities in their own right, Wakefield, York, Huddersfield, major biggest town in the country, I think, it's not been not got city status. You know, these are big places. So we're a federal geography and the idea that you've got a simple solution to this is one that's, you know, incorrect. So that's why it's causing us more problems. But at the root of it, if we get to a point where locally you know, the local authority leaders who are elected to mm -hmm. serve this area can do a deal with government where we're going to get more powers, going back to where I started, about that 95%. My view is that we should be able to move forward and, and get that get that to happen. And at the moment, unfortunately, that isn't happening. And uh, no doubt we can have a debate about the rights and wrongs of that. But at the end of the day, the, uh, the outcome for me that I want is more ability to affect the life chances and the success of this part of the world. We're disempowered at the moment and we need to be empowered and um, I, uh, I think that's the thing that we've got to work towards and don't mistake the, you know, the stuff in the press saying that we're all fighting and that we're all, you know, got different views. Actually, we have a stronger partnership with our partners in West Yorkshire than I've ever seen in the time I've been working here. We work really well together, we're making di a difference, we're getting results. We want to collaborate with Hull, we want to collaborate with Newcastle and Sheffield and the other cities in the north. Um, and at the moment we've been hamstrung from doing that because of a technical argument about things that aren't working. So for me, we've got to find a way through it somehow and hopefully we will over the next few weeks. Picking up on Tom's first point, uh, the People's Congress of China is the only legislature that's uh, <coughs> small. The House of Lords is the only one that's second to. You're a member, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. It's, so the House of Lords is the second in the, the world for, for size. You know, so truly, we have got a system of governance that's probably the worst you could imagine. <coughs> and what Tom didn't mention, I will. All national politicians are truly hopeless, truly hopeless when it comes to devolution. They don't understand local government, most of them. They certainly don't understand the region, and they are loath to <coughs> devolve power. Every one of them tell you before the election, vote for us and we promise you, we want to decentralise. And they never do. Never do. My party, when it was in power last, and it seems an age ago now, uh, we had the regional assembly, and I chaired it as Tom said. And at the same time, uh, my party created the RDA, <coughs> and the two organisations worked well together. The truth is, the members on the RDA board weren't picked locally; they were picked by government. The chair of the RDA wasn't picked locally; it was picked by government, by central government. So what happened then was, my party decided to scrap the regional assembly. I got a phone call from the minister, who I won't name, and a friend. And so we decided to scrap the regional assembly. So that went and we were left with the RDA. The present government got in in 2010. 
on a promise to scrap the RDA because they didn't like that. So the jeweller did. And then they found out there's nothing in the region. You need something in the region in terms of driving <coughs> regional economies. So what they did, they got a 13-year-old special advisor and they said, come up with a name. So they've got all the, oh, the word partnership, because that's kind of sexy, is put the word partnership and a little local, and enter, that's it, we'll call it a local enterprise partnership. And that's how it came about, the local enterprise partnership. And uh, as has been said, I chaired the Lead City Region uh, Leadership Board. And that was all party, five West Yorkshire leaders uh, from Labour and the smaller districts from the Conservative Party. And actually, we had a very, very good working relationship. And then what happened is that the government said, right, we've got another bright idea, we'll have city deals. So Leeds, as a council, as a standalone council, was offered a city deal. And I said this on many occasions, to Leeds' as credit, they said, no, we want to make sure that the city deal is broader than just the city of Leeds, and they included the five West Yorkshire councils. And I think you were there, Tom. We went to meet the load of the cabinet, and uh, they said to us, "You can have a city deal, but as a condition, you've got to create a combined authority." And we said we will. And Pick I remember Pickles. Do you remember Pickles? Eric Pickles saying to me, "Well." Uh, well, I do I know you also just told you. So it's that kind of, you know, really enlightening dialogue that makes this job so worthwhile. So anyway, we get back to the, uh, the North, and uh, we said, right, we better create a combined authority. Now I've given him a promise. So uh, that took an age. We should have worked with civil servants, and no disrespect to any civil servants in the audience. It's like pulling teeth. But eventually, after a lot of negotiation uh, with officials and uh, with officers from Leeds and partners, we signed a devolution uh, combined authority agreement. Uh, and that's what, I think it became live in June 2014. And the combined authority actually is unique in West Yorkshire in that it is not all part of <coughs> one party. It's not just the five West Yorkshire Labour leaders who are on the combined authority. It's two members of the Conservative Party, and we also have a Liberal Democrat. Nowhere else in the country has got an all-party combined authority. I tell you that because I've heard it said that the West Yorkshire leaders might be very political in trying to block this, that, or the other. So we have worked on an all-party basis. In addition. We've got Roger Marsh, who's the chair, excuse me, the chair of the LEP, also on the combined authority. So you can see it's public sector, it's cross-party, and it includes business. And actually, I should have brought enough copies for you all. We produced a document very recently that set out what we've achieved. A huge list of achievements. Because we got the biggest growth deal in the country, a billion pounds. Bigger than Manchester, bigger than anywhere. And we've been given that growth deal money, and I think we've achieved a lot of success with it right across West Yorkshire. Right across West Yorkshire. And as Tom said, uh, before then we had the <coughs> referendum on mayors. My view about mayors uh, is, you know, if, if we want a mayor, why don't we have a proper, serious adult debate about how this country is going to be governed? And we never do. What politicians nationally do is tinker with things. And that's what we need. It may well be in some parts of the country, and there is a good thing. I think in London, people would say that's now established, and I can't see anybody going back to a situation in London without. <coughs> but I think in West Yorkshire, we've shown, because of the success, through strong collective leadership, we've achieved a lot. Now then, the government are now saying, well, we won the election, therefore you're going to have to have a mayor. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And I say great exception, actually, that Osborne is trying to, it is Osborne, by the way, nobody else. <coughs> Osborne is trying to change the governance of this country through the back door. 
no referendum this time, none at all. And I get folk coming up to me in my uh, city saying at least we'd like a referendum, but it's not being offered. Do I think this government really and truly want to give real devolution? No, I don't. No, I don't. Should we take a deal? Perhaps if it's good enough, yes. And I think that's the view shared by every West Yorkshire leader, and it's certainly the view of those authorities like Manchester, Birmingham, and other places where a combined authority has now been created. I think we are the only big city or city region where no deal has been signed because you see it in the press. West Yorkshire hasn't signed a deal yet. Uh, that's wrong. I've got a copy here. Uh, I signed this on behalf of uh, the combined authority in March last year. So people forget that uh, because it was signed by Nick Clegg. Uh, <laughs> oh, catch you. And people have forgotten who Nick Clegg is. That was satire, by the way, for the uh, camera. Wasn't meant to be a, you've got any little Democrats. Nick Clegg signed it on the basis there was no mayor, interestingly. That's what he did. So, uh, we are now negotiating with government. We are deep in negotiations with government. I think it last week, Tom, we met with Lord O'Neill again. Uh, we're meeting, reg <coughs> uh, meeting regularly with, uh, uh, with ministers trying to get an agreement. And I want to say one final point about geography. Because it's been said that we are a block of having a greater Yorkshire, a greater Yorkshire model. I'm going to keep looking at the atlas. The can't see any place called Greater Yorkshire. And those are advocating it, by the way, because Sheffield's going to do its own deal, which they have. I'm being deliberately provocative now, by the way, because Sheffield's going to do its own deal. So you can't have a Yorkshire model. Yorkshire's gone. Well, you know, we, we think differently. I've <coughs> debated this before. Yorkshire's gone, because so Sheffield's gone. So what people say, oh, let's call it Greater Yorkshire. Let me tell you this, there's more than one economy in Yorkshire. There are four distinct economies in Yorkshire, and if devolution means anything, and the one thing where I do agree with this government is, devolution has to be based on growing economies, based on cities. And that's what we should do. I mean, those folk who are saying, oh, let's have, you know, it's, it's a nostalgic idea that somehow we're a brand, so let's base a combined authority and a mayor on a brand. We'll still keep the brand of Welcome to Yorkshire. We're still going to do that, as we said, and we'll continue to pay it. So it's a nonsense to say, let's have one combined authority, because Yorkshire, or what's left of Yorkshire, because Sheffield's done a deal, is not a single economy. Anybody who says it is, is simply wrong. Thank you. So... Thanks for the opportunity to speak and thank you for the introduction, Craig. Um, I, I think today's event is um, a very timely discussion. Clearly, we've had the kind of recent flurry of devolution agreements and the um, APPG inquiry that, that Bob is chairing that we heard about earlier, I think is going to play an important role in terms of shaping the debate around the future devolution landscape in, in England and indeed the wider UK. Just want to give a, a sort of a few remarks from a from a Sheffield City region perspective. Um, I'm not going to go into the to the content of the of the recently <coughs> signed deal. Um, and I think picking up um, a number of things that have already been said today, both this morning and um, by Tom and by Peter. Um, I think the first thing to say is that um, devolution is a policy territory that we in the local government are familiar with and have in fact been asking for for a number of years. Um, Sheffield, um, together with the other core cities, um, has been sort of very consistent in its um, calls for, for devolution to local levels and to um, functioning local economies for um, 10 or so years now. So I think that as well as this being a, a top-down agenda, there is a sense that um, this is at least middle up um, in that we have um, been calling for some of this from local government. Now the precise um, form that that has taken um, we can have some uh, debate about. I think the other thing that I'd want to say at this point is that we need to see devolution as a means to an end rather than an end in itself. Seeking devolution of powers, functions or funding 
is only of any benefit where we believe that we can do a better job at a local level than national government is able to do. I think we've made the case around that um, in, in a number of areas, but that has to be um, the starting point. Seeking powers for, it, for its own sake is, is not the right way of doing it. From a Sheffield perspective, um, I think what has been very important to us and um, picks up on, on what uh, Peter has just said is around keeping shape um, in terms of all of our devolution discussions. So being very clear that what we are most interested in are the tools to drive economic growth for our city region in line with the plan that we set out a couple of years ago and only actually asking for things that are going to help us to achieve or potentially achieve more quickly the aspirations um, that uh, are set out in that plan. And that in turn leads on to the, to the geography point. Um, and I think um, from a Sheffield City Region perspective, um, we also believe that collaboration at the level of, and this is a horrible bit of jargon, but the functional economic area, i.e. the real economy that Sheffield <laughs> operates in, is the best way to achieve the aspirations that we've set out for our local economy. But equally, Sheffield City Region is not and cannot be an island in and of itself. And to achieve that economic rebalancing that we need um, from the south to the north, we can't do that by being in competition with other bits of the, with other bits of the north. We need a collectively strong set of um, the great northern cities and towns to uh, all pull their economic weight. Um, and that means that for some issues, it makes more sense for us to collaborate at a pan-northern level or um, mm. at, a, at a level other than the Sheffield City region geography. And I think some of the work that's been going on around transport for the north and the uh, rail north um, franchising discussions are a really good example of how that is beginning to happen and um, we've uh, obviously got uh, a long way to go there but it makes economic sense for us to be thinking about those sorts of issues at that level. The concept of bespoke devolution is the one that the g this government um, has pursued. Um, that has meant um, different deals for different places based on their different needs and responding to those different needs in the most locally appropriate way. And um, that has uh, manifested itself in the fact that um, we in Sheffield City Region haven't <coughs> accepted um, any powers that we haven't actually asked for as part of the submissions that we've made to government. So for example, we haven't accepted the idea that Greater Manchester have had of combining the Police and Crime Commissioner role with that of the <coughs> elected mayor. It wasn't right for us, it didn't fit the SEP at this, uh, the strategic economic plan at this point in time, and it would have caused us to lose shape. Um, Greater Manchester is different, it requires different solutions and that's fine, but those sorts of differences, I think, are something that we have to <coughs> accept as part of that, um, of the devolution process and framework has been, that has been set up. Um, the governance issue is clearly a fraught one and a critically important one, that um, question of accountability um, to the public that um, we're making decisions on behalf of is clearly vital. I think it, it is on record that we didn't ask for a Metro Mayor, um, but it became clear, as Peter said, that um, to get the deal that was on offer, the corollary of that was that um, government would expect us to take a Metro <coughs> Mayor. What we have sought to do, and, and the leader of the, the council, um, Julie Dore, has, has sought to do, is to <laughs> ensure that, that the, the way in which the mayor works will work for us um, effectively, given the particular local circumstances that pertain in Sheffield City Region. Final point, really, is that I think that what's really important through all this discussion on devolution is that become clear that devolution is a process, not an end state that we're, we're aiming for. It goes back to um, what Bob Kerslake w was saying um, this morning, that there isn't necessarily a goal in mind for devolution in England. 
But from a Sheffield City region perspective, the current devolution deal is not the uh, sum total of our ambitions. There were aspects of what we asked for for this deal that we weren't able to secure, notably around housing um, and around the 16 to 18 skills agenda. Um, there are, those are areas that we will want to continue to talk to government about in the future that we haven't even um, sort of, uh, uh, begun to, to have that, that conversation. Um, I'm aware of time, so I'll just uh, sort of wrap up very, very quickly with, uh, with a few thoughts um, for what the future might hold. Um, I think the first thing is that this idea of devolution is here to stay for the foreseeable future. I don't see any way that any um, future government um, is going to wind that back in the, in the short to medium term. But if we are serious about this, then we need to be able to demonstrate from a local government combined authority perspective that actually devolution is having an impact. And we need to be really clear about that, that we're actually demonstrating real and improved outcomes in those areas. I think there's also um, a point that the current approach to individual deals is not going to be sustainable in the medium term. It might continue to be a feature of the landscape for the short term, but actually the capacity of government, apart from anything else, to sustain that and the clamour from other areas, um, particularly those non-metropolitan areas, um, to have their own sorts of devolution is going to be very, very difficult um, to hold back. So we need to think about uh, a different framework for, for devolution in the future. Um, and then I think the, the, the other point that I want to make is around fiscal devolution. We talked about business rates localisation this morning. Um, that is um, a step towards fiscal devolution. It comes with a whole load of challenges and issues that um, we will need to work through and work with government on if that is to become a reality. But how far does it go in terms of um, actually giving, our, giving local areas the control to make uh, mm -hmm. control of the funding to make the decisions that are most appropriate for those local areas. And f my final point then is that devolution to date has been largely around economic development and I think there is a question for us to consider in future as to whether there are other things that we would want to seek devolution over, particularly in terms of the way in which public services work in our cities, whether we can um, find a different way of organising and delivering public services that is more appropriate for um, a 21st century society that isn't based on the departmental silos that we've seen in the past and whether there are other ways of um, delivering those services that might require the devolution of powers from central government to local government. There was a very interesting IPPR report um, out, I think, uh, at the end of last week, looking at the devolution of criminal justice funding um, to local areas as a mechanism to help reduce the prison population and to reduce the costs of that. Those sorts of ideas are going to be the next stage, I believe, in terms of how we begin to think about what devolution might mean at a local level. I'll finish there. Um, I'm very struck by Bob Kerslake's point about devolution bottom-up as opposed to top-down. A um, hundred years ago in my country, uh, we, we did bottom-up big time. We had an insurrection and we kicked the English out. And uh, we achieved our devolution in, in a dramatic, uh, slightly uh, uh, violent way. Uh, the Scots have done it less violently so far, uh, and the Welsh as well. Uh, and we Celts, uh, I've lived in Yorkshire for 50 years, worry about the English because they don't really understand devolution. They really rather like holding on to the centralised base. We're bewildered when we come to Yorkshire, and I'll come to this in a moment, as to what, what, what's going on in Yorkshire at the present time. Greg Clark's approach to devolution is piecemeal. I think that's right, actually, because if there's no bottom-up, there's got to be some top-down. He doesn't want top-down, but he's sort of top-downing, saying, will you tell us what you want? The answer is, you're not asking for very much. It's my, my impression that the, the devolution requests, even from Manchester, are pretty modest by the standards that I would expect. There are three aspects to the criteria that, are, that, are, that he's put in. One is to de devolution will produce cost-effective improvement delivery of public services. 
nothing to do with me. The second is a more dynamic economic development through devolution than the ones before, everything to do with me. Uh, and the third one is public credibility, which is the mayor issue, which I happen to think is an important issue. Now, when you're a non-Yorkshire person, but you've lived in Yorkshire for 50 years, you are amazed at the way people like Peter <coughs> disown the Yorkshire brand. <coughs> Any business person would say, this is one of the great brands of the world. Uh, and to ignore it and to put it to one side, when you see other great brands, like my own, Ireland, like Denmark, like Scotland, all countries about the same size as Yorkshire, exploiting their brand for economic development spectacularly, and nothing happens here. Nothing happens here, except we argue amongst ourselves about whether one city is better than another city, or whether, as Peter said, they're all diverse economies. That's rubbish. It's a, they, these are a single, integrated group of people, five million of us, who should be working much more closely together. And the rich diversity of our economy, Leeds with its finance, Sheffield with its engineering, the energy estuary where I live, York and all its uh, historic att attractions, the Moors, the Dales, the Wolds, all of these sang, uh, tie up to a, a very unified, diverse economy which we ignore. The potential of the Yorkshire brand to attract potential investors. We leave this to UKTI. This morning in the, in the, in the FT, uh, Amazon has said they're going to have 2,500 new jobs here. Who in Yorkshire is saying, let's have those here? Nobody. I promise you, nobody will be saying that. Boris Johnson might be saying so, but nobody here it will be saying here, because we all be looking at each other. We want to get more people to come and work here and to live here. Very <laughs> difficult. Employers find it difficult to attract people to come here. Yorkshire brand is a great way of, of, of reaching out to those people. We want get to get people to visit. We have got something going there. Not very much, I have to say. We could do an awful lot more than we're doing at the present time. We want to promote exports. We don't have a single voice in the export market compared to all our competitors, major competitors. We want to motivate our citizens. That should be quite easy with the brand that people identify with. Not as much as we'd like, but they do identify. Whenever I look at the cricket score, I actually look at how uh, Roos and and uh, Bairstow are doing before I look at the English score. And that's the sort of thing that people in, 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 in Yorkshire tend to do. Um, and we need to stand shoulder to shoulder with our colleagues in the north of England, and the northwest of England, particularly Manchester. The need to be ambitious. It seems to me that all of the ski plans that are going through here are far too unambitious compared with what is going in those other countries that I mentioned. Now, as far as the economic benefits of it all, it's full engagement with the rest of the North economy through a Yorkshire approach, a regional economic plan, which we had in Tom's days, which seemed to make sense and still stands the test of time, regional marketing, as I've just mentioned, regional infrastructure issues, whether it's rail, roads, rail, sea, flood, all of them interconnected and not connected properly at the present time. Uh, negotiating direct with the European Union. We leave this to people in Whitehall to do that for us. We could perfectly easily do that ourselves if we got together. Can't do it out separately. Of course we can't do it separately. But Whitehall recognises Yorkshire more than Yorkshire recognises Yorkshire. Uh, Europe recognises Yorkshire more than Yorkshire recognises Yorkshire. Using our scale to exert financial muscle, we could be raising far more funds locally on, on that base of five million people than we do separately. A regional approach to environmental issues, which cross all our four boundaries. I could go on and go on. A regional approach to skills. All of this we know. And eventually, in time, perhaps, a regional approach to issues like health. I'll stop there.